Hi, I'm Chrissy O'Malley, and this is Better Science Teaching. Today, what I'm going to do is show you a little bit, a little thing that I do at the end of the year for um, getting rid of microbes that we have in the lab that we want to make sure that we sterilize and dispose of properly before uh, and during our spring clean. At the end of every year, if you've been doing any kinds of projects that involve microbes, there's a couple of ways to get rid of things and to sterilize them properly. I like to use a pressure sterilizer. This one is by American Standard, and it's similar to other models that they have for pressure cooking or for pressure canning, but um, according to the instructions, this is not the same device, and you need to have one that's specifically set up as a sterilizer. Um, although, owning a pressure canner, I'm not really sure what the technical differences are between the two. What we've got here is inside a bucket, which is where I'm going to have all of my specimens. These are in bags that are intended for this purpose um, because they need to not melt under high heat and high pressure. Uh, what I've already done is filled the inner, the inner pot. Every, every kind of sterilizer has a limit that you have to fill it to for it to be able to function properly. Then this bucket goes on the inside. It will get pushed down when I put the lid on it. It also has a feature on the inside that looks like a little pipe. This is so that pressure can get all the way down into the bottom of this thing um, and then be vented out the top. So I'm going to take this, put it on top of a large hot plate, and then apply the lid so that I can apply pressure to this. So what you're going to want to do is make sure that your Petri dishes are unsealed. Um, if you've got parafilm around there, you're going to want to make sure that you've loosened it up so that the steam can penetrate inside of this. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that these are open. I've loosely uh, put a twist tie around this just kind of to keep it together while it's in here. Um, let's see, this thing is going to heat up and pr the steam will pressurize it to 15 PSI, which is the minimum that's required. You wanna run about 15 PSI and then 20 minutes per liter. I have less than a liter of stuff in here and, less, and about a liter of water probably. I'm, I'm going to let this go for 40 minutes. I think that that will be a safe amount of time. Um, longer is okay as long as you don't run out of water. If, if you have steam that's being released from this, you could end up with a dry pot. The best thing to do is just keep an eye on the pressure. Make sure the pressure stays, stays pretty constant. Um, so we're going to set this up. I'm going to rotate this so I can see this pipe. There's little markers on the sides of the, the pot and of the lid. This is a little bit greasy because it has to be greased to seal properly. So there's my, there's my arrow on the lid. I'll line these guys up. Make sure my hose is in that tube on the inside. Push it down. There's little hooks on the lid that will grasp these little things sticking out. So it stays down now. And I'm going to tighten this like you would with um, lugs on a tire. You want to do opposite sides. One thing that I've already done is check to make sure that all the vent holes and the functional parts of the lid are open. It's okay if they loosen up and flop over. So I've got a pressure gauge and I've also got a, a pressure release valve. And this I believe is, is something that helps um, as an emergency, an emergency pressure valve. So I'm gonna tighten these. And when this pressurizes, this top lid will lift up a little bit and these things just hold it down. Lift this right up here and rotate it so it fits there as best as I can. I'm going to turn this on and you want to make sure that you don't walk away from, from your, your sterilizer. I'm going to turn this up. So this is the release position if I want to release pressure. I'm going to have it flop down so it will pressurize. I've got my hot plate on 10 and I'm going to watch my pressure gauge. So. You may be able to see on camera here, once it gets to 15 PSI, it's at 250 degrees. You don't start your clock until you reach 15 PSI because you have to be at that temperature for that amount of time. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash my hands because they're gross. <laughs> um, and we'll check this out in a minute. So our pressure sterilizer has reached 15 PSI. Um, it's making some, some spitting sounds out of this little valve right here. My pressure canner at home has a weight that sits on top and the weight is, is what keeps it at that pressure and you have to increase the pressure to move it out of the way to release it. 
So it should be good to go. We're gonna let it run for about 40 minutes just to make sure that everything in there is sterilized and clean. And there are no fungi or bacteria or other microbes. All right, we'll be back. All right, now we've hit the right pressure with our pressure sterilizer. Um, you can kind of see, let's see. You can see on our pressure gauge that we're in the green. We don't want to get to the red, so I'm keeping an eye on it. Um, I have turned off the heat, so it should it should keep it down. If I get into trouble, this is a little release valve. This is really kind of toasty if I mess with this, but I can I can release some of the steam. I don't want to do that because if I do that, then I'm losing water from that system. So we're just hoping that by turning off the temperature and keeping an eye on it, that I can keep it um, under 15 psi, and that'll mean it's at the right temperature for us to be able to sterilize things. All right, we've reached the end of our time. It's been going for about 45 minutes. I let it go a little bit longer than I have to. So now what we need to do is depressurize the sterilizer. It's gonna be super loud. Um, I know it's unsettling, so we're going to, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Here we go, there's our pressure counter. You can see it's um, above 15 PSI. It's not in the danger zone. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the temperature. So now it's no longer heating up, so there shouldn't be any new steam that's being generated. But when I release this pressure, what's gonna happen, because this is under a lot of pressure and a lot of heat, then a lot of steam is gonna come out of this. Um, in order to open this, there's a little toggle here. And when I flip this up, it's gonna pull a plunger up that's gonna allow that all to escape, and it's gonna release a lot of steam and be very loud. And it's kinda hot. All right, so this thing has completely depressurized, and what we're gonna do now is open it up carefully and take a look inside. I'm leaving them on top so that it keeps holding it down so I don't want it to push it upward until it's all the way loosened. Just because it makes it easier to unscrew them. You can kind of see it's floating upward because remember we had more stuff in there than it would fit. There we go. You can twist it back. Kind of a little bit. Mm, in good shape. Okay, the last thing is a little peek inside this so you have an idea of what to expect. Ooh, it's steamy. So what we've got in there is some stuff that looks pretty melted, um, but the bags didn't melt. You have to make sure that you're using bags that are meant for this purpose because um, everything inside there is gonna melt together. The agar, the containers, all that stuff. Um, and so what you're gonna need to be able to do is have something that does not melt in that intense heat. Um, the ones that I use, I usually just get from uh, inside the packages of petri dishes that we buy from usually from Carolina Biological but it comes with a little disposal bag that's what that bag on the inside is for is for using in your sterilizer your autoclave um, yeah so I hope that that helps you feel a little more confident about using your autoclave and making sure you clean up your lab properly at the end of the school year so you have a nice clean space for the fall I'll see you soon stay safe and be well bye